In today's video, we're going to be working on this super cute Valentine painting, so stick around! Welcome back, you guys! We have a super fun video for you guys today. We haven't painted together in a while, so it's time to tackle that project. We're going to be working on this really adorable little abstract heart perfect for Valentine's Day. Now listen, this does not require a lot of skill. Anybody can do it. <laughs> so let's jump on in and get started. To start this project off, I'm using acrylic paint from Apple Barrel and a one and a half inch foam brush. You can pick these up at places like Walmart, Michaels, Joann, any craft store should have them. I also have a 16 by 20 art canvas that I picked up at Michaels. What I'm doing first is laying down the base for my heart design. Now I know it may not seem to make a lot of sense because it's white on white, but trust me, it really does. You are sealing in your fabric so that when you over lay your other colors on top they don't seep through and you won't have to use quite as much of them because we are going to thin our paint down and use it more as watercolor so go ahead and get your heart shaped out with that white paint unfortunately our lighting was not the best in these first couple of scenes so you're not going to be able to see that heart taking form but in person you will Next up, we're using a gorgeous pink acrylic paint. We're gonna thin this down with water and essentially make it a watercolor. I know, the lighting is off. No worries, we're gonna adjust that for you in the next couple of frames. <laughs> Go ahead and grab yourself a little bit wider of a foam brush this time. And we're gonna begin applying that paint to your canvas like a typical watercolor. It is gonna be a little thinner and it is gonna move around a lot more fluid, which is exactly what we wanna to do to be able to get the backdrop the way we want it to look. Be really careful as you're working around the outline of your heart. If you have that white paint on there, then it should not bleed. You should be good to go. And look at here, we fixed the color for you. <laughs> now you can see the true color of that beautiful, beautiful pink. Isn't it gorgeous? Here is the look that we're going for at the end product of our canvas. It's gonna be like a stonewashed denim look. We're just gonna keep building the layers until we get that desired finish. Now, as with any project, don't forget to paint the sides of your canvas. You don't want to leave those bare. Now, if you're like me and you just have a hobby of painting, you may not have a large array, a variety of colors. So, just mix and match. I have added a little bit of white to my watercolor. I added a tad bit more water as well to keep that super loose. And now I'm going over the darker pink with a light wash of a lighter pink. What we're doing here is adding a little bit of dimension. You should be able to see through that top layer of watercolor to where you have the variations of the dark pink and the lighter pink. This is absolutely the desired look that we're going for and a foam brush is the best for achieving that kind of look. Keep in mind you can do this with any colors that you want to. I've just chosen pink. Now I'm taking this paper towel, I'm just wadding it up so that it gives me some crinkles in the edge. And I'm starting to remove a little bit of the paint, kind of like you would if you're using a sponge when painting. You can see some texture really starting to take form and this is allowing it to pull paint away from the canvas so you see a little bit of the white peeking through. This is what is gonna give us that kind of stone washed denim look. To lighten up my canvas even more, I have watered down some plain white paint and I'm gonna give it a thin wash over the entire backdrop. This is gonna lighten it a little bit more and give it just kind of that more of a stone washed feel. It's very important if you're trying to achieve that kind of look to keep the layers going and make them lighter and lighter each time. Thank you. 
Using a fresh wad of paper towels, go ahead and start sponging around, removing some of that paint, moving it around, filling it in until you get the end result you're going for. Once your canvas is dry, you can begin working on that heart. We're taking some red paint and a regular bristle brush. This time we're gonna use kind of a dry brush method, meaning we don't want to fully saturate the bristles with lots and lots of paint. You saw there that I scraped some of my paint off on the side of the bowl, getting most of it off of those bristles so that it wasn't super wet as I went along. Now you're gonna notice that I kind of changed that up. In some parts, the paint is gonna be a lot thicker, and then in other parts it's going to be more the dry brush method this is what gives us that abstract look abstract art nothing is to be uniform and it's really all just depends on how you end up liking the paint once it's on the canvas so feel free to play around get creative there's really no rules no rhyme or reason that is the beauty of abstract art if you want to add the dimension and texture to your art, use a paintable caulk. Look how pretty this is. It almost gives it kind of a stucco appeal, and it keeps your painting from just being flat on a canvas. I'm just working my way around the heart. One thing that you are going to notice is that that red paint is still wet. I love that it's still wet because it is going to mix in with that caulk a little bit and you will see as I move that caulk in towards the center of the heart that it brings in that variation of color. That is so important to me when you're doing abstract art because abstract art is all about mixing and meshing the colors together. The different variations in your color is going to be what gives your picture life. So. Make sure that you keep your paint just a little bit wet as you're moving through this process. I'm just going to keep working my way around, moving towards the inside of the heart. You'll notice that some of the areas are more raised than others. Some I go back and kind of flatten out, and I just lay that caulk just all around in a whimsical design. There is no rule here. Just get creative and use your imagination. Read the instructions on your caulk. Mine took two hours to dry before it was paintable, so keep that in mind before you begin the next step. Next up, go back in with your pink paint, only this time keep it just as it is right out of the container. You don't want to dilute it down at this point. Now, I chose to go over top of my red paint just a little bit but you do it however you want to. To me, the beauty of abstract art is blending and meshing your colors together with no really sharp, hard edges separating the two. But again, it's really all in what your eye chooses to behold. Make sure you work yourself around that caulk really well, maneuvering your brush because you do wanna make sure it's painted around all the edges. As we did before, we are going to layer our color. So this time I have diluted that pink down with a little bit of white. We still have no water at this point. This is not a watercolor. I've just mixed two colors together to give me a lighter pink. And you can see there how the dimension and shadows are all starting to take effect. When I stepped back to take a look at my heart, I thought it was just a little too plain. <laughs> so I decided to add these extra little abstract lines, giving you the illusion of an outline of the heart, but yet not going all the way around it. And then I decided to go back into the center of this heart with that red, while the pink was still wet, mind you, so that they would blend together, giving a little bit deeper of some color and just adding a little more dimension 
inside of that heart. Again, it's all about working around, blending and melding those colors together until you finally get the look that you're going for. Now it's finally time to bring back in the watercolor. I've simply taken white and diluted it down with some water. Now I'm using the same brush because that's gonna bring a little bit of pink into that color as well. And you can see I'm just working it around to give it some highlight and look how it's starting to look three dimensional. I decided to do one more step off camera, but if you will look really closely, you can see some red highlights popping off the top of the peaks of the caulk. Just simply take a dry brush with a dab of red paint and run it right across the surface. It will hit those high spots and give you the final dimension that you're looking for. And then my fine tip paint pen oh, was out of paint. So I'm just using a paintbrush and some black paint to put my signature down. And here you go. Here is the final look. This is perfect for setting on a table, maybe setting on a desk space, or you can even take this canvas and hang it on the wall. So many different ways that you can display this to add something special to your Valentine decor. If you guys decide to give this one a try, be sure to tag me on social media. I'd love to take a look. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next video.